Wait, let's start from the beginning. I wanted to build a military vehicle that could traverse the desert environment and collect video from a front-mounted camera. I looked at some existing robots for inspiration and after examining their features, began the sketching process. With the sketching phase now done, it's time to jump into CAD. I created the tank tread using roller chain. It's exactly like the chain you'd find on a bicycle, but just a smaller gauge. Then screws and nuts were added to attach the tread pieces. This simple assembly has hundreds of parts, so I'm thankful my computer didn't light on fire. I added a DC motor, sprocket, and free spinning roller then built a suspension assembly. The idea behind the suspension was to tension the top of the chain if it droops while keeping the base of the chain taut. Now it's finally time to build it. I purchased shock absorbers and 3D printed the linkage assembly for testing. I guess you could say there was room for improvement. The biggest problem with the suspension is that the rocker arms kept getting stuck in the upper position. The second biggest problem is that the rollers are only supported by an arm on one side. When we look at the other side, we see that they hang freely. This gap is the problem because it allows the roller to hang, thereby causing some interference and rubbing against the arm and washer. I sought to fix these shortcomings with a newly designed suspension arm. I created a drawing detailing the new shock absorber location and rocker arm design. The first problem is fixed by allowing each arm to have its own shock absorber. I took this in the CAD and modeled two support arms this time for less friction on the roller. In a cross section, we can see the screws and ball bearings that hold the rocker arm to the side of the body. The kinematics were tested inside a fusion by setting rotational limits on the rocker arms. As you can see, the first rocker arm comes in contact with the second shock absorber. This is not a huge issue, but something that needs to be considered during the prototyping phase. Now it's finally time to build it, again. I 3D printed the parts and began assembling them together. There were over 200 screws, nuts, bearings, and other fasteners used in the assembly. With the tread and the suspension completely assembled, it was time to hook up the motors to a DC power supply for a test run. The track assembly was working successfully off of the power supply. It's great that it works, but there aren't any electrical outlets in the desert, so we'll have to find another source of power. I chose to use lithium ion batteries because of their high amperage and versatility. I built a custom battery dock to hold them in series using off-the-shelf contact plates. 
An important consideration was how to keep the batteries connected to each other when experiencing vibration. The dock holds them tightly while still allowing open space for heat dispersion. Even when shaken, the batteries do not disconnect or fall out of the dock, opening the circuit. I connected a Raspberry Pi and dual motor controller to act as the brains that control the speed and direction. These were screwed to a custom plate and connected to the batteries and motor. It was time to assemble the electronics into the empty housing. The battery and controllers were added first, then the night vision camera was connected through a hole in the housing. The two large barrels on either side are infrared light emitters. They allow for better visibility in the darkness. Next, a battery for the computer and long-range Wi-Fi antenna were added. I hope to add more sensors and modules in the future. I connected the Raspberry Pi to Node Red, an online programming tool that allowed me to create an online GUI for controlling the speed and direction. All the code used for testing the motors was written in Python. This also allows for autonomous movement using pre-programmed directions. Without further ado, here's the end result. The front-mounted camera works, but with mixed results. The robot needs to be able to collect video both during the day and during the night. The night vision quality was not very good with this camera. It may need to be upgraded with a better sensor and larger lens for more light collection. Desert camouflage was added to disguise it from aerial view. The tracks still work, even with the fabric attached. Since the robot can be controlled from a mobile device, VR capability is possible. This robot can traverse a desert environment and collect video from a front-mounted camera. But there's a lot more capability I want to add before I can really consider it to be a military robot. If you'd like to do this project yourself, please check out my How to Build a Robot playlist. It outlines step-by-step -step from start to finish how I designed the rover in CAD. Let me know in the comments what you think about the construction and what sensors or code could be added. The vehicle is not autonomous yet, so full autonomy is still in the works. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more content just like this.